Holland Tunnel. The George Washington Bridge. The Empire State Building. Lincoln Highway. Hoover Dam. The Golden Gate. They're great achievements. Who built them? Men with guts and skill and sweat. Sand hogs, ratchet heads, wood butchers, pole climbers, and hard rock men. They were the builders, the men who made this nation grow. And then one day we had a dire need for them, not to grow, but to survive. Pearl Harbor. country called, and they came, no longer young, some of them. Beer-bellied, bald, big men, strong men, workers, with eyes that had seen life, hands that had mastered heavy equipment. The Navy took them in, and in the carnage that they found, they wrought wonders. They helped the Navy a long way back from Bora Bora to Iwo Jima to the Rhine. They were unique, these CBs, men of the construction battalions. They bridged oceans, built roads, hacked airfields out of jungle. A proud record. General MacArthur used to say that there was only one trouble with the CBs, not enough of them. They had a motto, we build. We fight, nothing fancy, straight talk. That tells it all. That's how this country came together. The CB story didn't just happen. It's men who make and master events. The Navy had always used civilian contractors for construction work on overseas bases, like at Guam and Cavite, Wake. We lost a lot of good men there in those first days. Civilians who couldn't defend themselves in war. They weren't allowed to fight under the Geneva Convention. Admiral Ben Morrell changed that. Chief of the Navy Bureau of Yards and Docks, he obtained authority in late December of 1941 to organize military construction forces. The talent to build was sure there. And the Navy taught them how to fight the Navy way, and the rest of it is, as they say, history. And that proud record is all here, all around us. This is the CB Museum in Port Wainini, California.
Well, there it is. Except for the emotion. A few bugs, bombs, and snakes, and jungle. Raw living conditions. These men learned to overcome those things. Learned to live and work in some conditions that I don't think the little old lady in the tennis shoes would stand for. I'll tell you, whenever I reached the forward area, I always looked up the CBs because they were the best groungers. They had the best chow, the best quarters, the best. The CBs are still at work, sir. War or no war. Still the best? Yes, sir. CBs are still at work. Designing, replacing, repairing, and always building. From housing in the Antarctic to space tracking stations on remote Pacific islands to construction under the sea. The CB mission is still a big one worldwide. But do you think that today's CBs could stack up with those fellows who came ready-made? 401 advanced bases in the Pacific, 111 airstrips, one of them on Tarawa, bloody Tarawa, 15 hours under fire. Can I start at the beginning? No better place. The link to the CB traditions of the past begins with the new recruited boot camp. Arrival here is really a departure to a new beginning and a new style of life. A new hairstyle is the least welcome of the many traditions to come. Today's recruit is a part of a long green line of tradition. Yet he is different in many ways from his volunteer counterpart of World War II. The average age of today's CB is 24 compared to the 37 of his World War II shipmates. One thing has not changed. The boot camp experience remains as rugged as ever. All the skills necessary for survival at sea are a part of the demanding challenges of life and recruit training. After a period of home leave, the prospective CB will report to his first duty station, a construction battalion center. The three CB centers at Davisville, Rhode Island, Gulfport, Mississippi, and Port Wyneme, California, have trained hundreds of thousands of CBs to serve the nation in peace and war. Today, the CB centers are still home for both active duty and reserve construction battalions. In addition, these diverse complexes are host to entire communities of tenant activities, many of whom are directly involved supporting CB battalions. Davisville can point with pride to World War II in Korea, when more than 100,000 builders and fighters received their basic training here. Davisville was also famous as the birthplace of the Quonset Hut, although perhaps notorious would be a better word. In the old days in the Pacific, they used to call those things Tojo's Revenge. Davisville. The Restless Giant is still an important link in the CB organization, standing ready to serve in any future contingency with its deep water port, adjacent airfield, and its excellent training facilities and large warehouses. For the new CB and his battalion, the construction battalion centers at Gulfport and Port Wyneme represent more than military installations. The CB centers will be a home, an office, a school, a hospital, church, and recreation area. As our young CB enters the can-do world of the construction battalion, let us examine the CB centers, a comprehensive grouping of personnel and support activities that keep the CBs on the job around the Navy and around the world. For our new CB, there's the Naval Construction Training Center, and hours and days of hard work. CBs may not come ready-made these days, but they still have to be able to get the job done. So for the new recruit, it's back to books and back to basics. Great and proficiency training at the Construction Training Center is tough, reflecting the command motto, skill through knowledge. The heavy emphasis is on practical training. You don't drive heavy equipment, install telephone lines, or construct a building from theories taught in books. 
The word is hands-on, with instruction by experts. The best teaching the best, with facilities and equipment to match. Battalion Center is home for the Civil Engineer Corps Officers School, which provides professional training and indoctrination for regular and reserve officers, senior enlisted personnel, and selected civilians. Our young CB in his classroom, or on his bulldozer, may not yet be aware of the massive effort necessary to keep him in the picture and on the job. The Civil Engineer Support Office, CISO, is responsible for purchasing, assigning, and managing all CB equipment, both at home and overseas. As coordinators for all naval construction force training and facilities, as well as hardware and personnel requirements, CISO is forever designing, developing, and perfecting, making sure that what is provided will meet the needs of the fleet for today and tomorrow. FAXO the Facilities Systems Office provides the integrated, automated data processing services that translate plans and requirements into reality. That little girl punches some buttons and 50 bulldozers are shipped to Guam. Nautical Newton's law, what goes out must come in, usually much the worse for wear. The construction equipment departments are responsible for maintaining and repairing gear and returning it for service to the naval construction force. Restored, preserved for future use, and warehoused, it will be difficult to separate the repaired item from brand new similar stocks. These warehouses contain everything a mobile construction battalion could possibly need for regular deployment or mobilization contingency. Our recruit, now a CB, is ready to join his battalion, to become part of an elite corps of builders and fighters. Each time a battalion prepares for an overseas deployment, it receives training in all phases of defensive combat. Reserve battalions receive similar training during their two weeks annual active duty. The purpose of all this training is in line with another long-standing CB tradition, to be self-sufficient and able to accomplish the mission anywhere in the world, anytime, under any and all conditions. We build for fighters, we Fire. fight for what we build. The CB's in the car. That's aces back to back. And in an emergency, whether it be of humanitarian origin or one involving actual combat, the CBs, as always in their distinguished history, are ready. The old saying from World War II is true today. The possible we can do right now. The impossible takes a little longer. Have you heard about a mount out, sir? I've heard about, but I've never seen. You'll see one now. Within 48 hours, 51 vehicles and enough tools, weapons, rations, and medical supplies to support 93 men for five days can be ready for airlift. To support a military operation, furnish assistance to an earthquake area in the Middle East, or a typhoon-stricken region in Asia. 
wherever contingency or emergency support is needed. young fellow, there it is, the CB way. This brings us to the last, best known tradition of all, that a CB will serve when and where the nation calls. If necessary, far from the shores of the continental United States. Well, there's the knot that ties it all together. Being a CB means serving your country around the world, serving you and me. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to see him get a chance to come home. <laughs>